Hey guys, so uh, welcome to this tutorial about how to make a weather app. You all asked me, well not all, but many of you actually asked me on Instagram to make a tutorial so that we can build it together. I am going to do it today, except that I removed one small part from the, from the app, which is the date, because it's already a bit more complex and I didn't want to get into that because it would take much longer and I didn't want to confuse anyone. The topic of today is really like to learn about the APIs, the syntax and how it works. So this is what it's going to look like. You can see that if you, if you type a city, it just shows up the weather with an icon and a status and the temperature, of course. So I went ahead and I actually created my HTML already, which you can see here. I did it with bootstrap. I just didn't want to spend too much time on this because it's not a topic of today. So I'm going to put it in my description so that you guys can just copy it and we get directly to the JavaScript part. So let's get to JavaScript. The first thing we want to do is to basically grab everything from the HTML that we are going to need by the ID that we gave them and assign them to variables. To do so, we just say that we want to grab from the document by the ID. The first one is going to be the search form. Then we want one for the title, the status, the icon, the temperature, and the city input. So, title, status. weather icon the temperature these are the ideas I actually give inside the HTML you can see them here don't stress too much about that it's something you probably already know if you're attacking JavaScript the last one is the city input let's not forget to change the variable names status icon temp and input. So then we want to create a variable which will be called the weather URL for instance and we will assign it the value of the endpoint and uh, to the end of the URL you just need to add your your keys your API key so to do so you just go to open weather you make an account and they are going to give you a, a key you can see here that they tell you what how you can access their endpoints so you're just going to copy this basically it's always hard to copy i don't know why they do this and you are going to assign here instead of your api key in brackets you just assign your api key so i'm going to go ahead and get mine Please don't stop the screen and use mine, guys. Just make one on your own. And we assign it instead of these brackets. I don't know that one there. Why that one there? There we go. So you can see that inside, I'm missing the HTTP. Not sure why they removed it, but this might actually cause some issues because it will give you a 404 if you don't have the HTTP. So you can see here that in the brackets we have the actual like attributes how to access. So what do you see here? You see city name because basically whenever we are going to make a request, we're going to say, for example, I want to access the weather from Paris. Okay. And it gives me back all the data from Paris and I just grab whatever I want and display it on my HTML. So we don't want this part to be hard coded, but just to understand better, Let's start with it hard-coded and then we can make it dynamic. So let's go ahead and fetch this. Here is the, the syntax to request an API in JavaScript. So we, we fetch the URL and then we parse it to JSON. 
This is just a variable name, so it's like a parameter, so you, you can call it anything. You can call it mango, you can call it anything. It's con by convention, we call it response dot json. And then we want to call a function with a parameter. Again, this can be anything you want. And what you should do next is basically you just want to see what data gives you back, right? What is happening here? So always console log or whatever API you are using, just console log data so you can see what kind of object you're working with. And you can see here that we get an object with several keys, chord, weather, base, main, etc., etc. So from here, it's pretty basic actually. You just need to go and have a look at what kind of values you are getting back and the ones that you want you just grab them so for instance we can see that we are getting name which is something we are going to want right you want to display the name so we can go ahead actually and create a constant of, or no not even actually because we have the title here directly so you want to set the title the title sorry is inner html to the data dot name right because this is how you access an object in this case the object we are calling it data data is our parameter if that makes sense and on it we just access the value of the key name and how do we access a value uh, from an object you call its key and it gives you back the value so we can see that by doing so we get back Paris so we can do the same thing what do we want next we want the status right so we can go ahead and look for it go. there's another object and you can see that in here we have the description few clouds so this is what we're gonna take and we can actually even see that we have the icon here so what do we do we call the status variable that we declared before and we are going to change the inner text as well so actually above I changed the inner HTML but I wanted to change the inner text because I prefer to and so here how are we going to do this we are going to go inside of data I think that after data we had weather yeah so weather weather gives you back an array right so what do you want to do when you get back the array you want to take the first one so let's make sure that we grab the first one and you know when you get lost with these kind of things the best is to always log it and see what is happening so we can log this not sure what happened here we can log it let's comment this out so look at this here's what we're getting when we console log data dot weather at the index of zero we get this so what do we want to do next we simply want to call description right because this is what we want this is the description we want what do we call status and there we go we got the description when we set it inside of our status tag inside of the html next is a bit more complex so it's the icon so to make it more clear we are going to create a constant called icon url and assign it the url of the icon right so if we have a look we saw it before we saw the id really this is what we saw so zero to d gives you back the ID 
So I went ahead and had a look at the docs and the docs they tell you where is the icon available, what URL you can see it so you can guys play around, look at, uh, uh, find it on your own but really I'm giving it to you here so there's no need to. Thank you Hassan. So here's the URL but we are missing a part, we are missing the ID of the logo, .png. But we want this to be dynamic, right? So we are going to inter interpolate the data.weather again at the first array. And this time we want the icon. And then outside of the interpolation, you just write .png. And this becomes dynamic. Okay, so if you write Paris, it grabs the icon of Paris based on how the weather is there. If you put uh, Miami, the weather might be different, so the icon would be different. And this concept is what we are going to use here to make the fetch dynamic as well. But we are not done with the icon, we want to set an attribute of src. So here, how does it work? We set an attribute on this tag so we say what kind of attribute we set on it but also what does it contain what's its value in that case it's the icon URL and you can see that it changes here so to show you something if we put London for example you can see that everything changes everything is being dynamic especially the icon in that case it's the most important because it's how we are accessing URLs dynamically based on the user's input. So we are just missing one thing right now, uh, it's the temperature. So again let's access, let's change the inner text. And here I'm going to call the math.round method that's given by JavaScript just to get the as I saw before, but oh, let me show you better. Let's avoid any confusions. Oops. Okay. So you can see that when you go in data, in main, you can see that temp, it gives you back a strange, um, well, it gives you back a strange metric, no? It's because they're giving you the, they're not giving you in Celsius or Fahrenheit. And again, in the doc, you can uh, have a look and you'll see that they give you actually extra parameters. And you'll see that they actually give you extra parameters. And again, I am just going to give them to you to avoid you researching. But actually, if you would just Google it, you would find the answer. So in that way, in that case, it's basically saying that you want the metric. Here, so you add units to be equal to metric. This is how they call it, to get back Celsius. So let's have a look again, and you can see that now it's actually in Celsius. It makes more sense, right? But why am I going to call math.round on this? Because I don't want the dot thirty-six. It's just this. So let's go ahead. In our text is equal to math.round, and what do we want to round? Is the data dot main dot temp and there we go so now we get the degrees so now it's perfect our card is actually ready we have everything we need we are just missing one thing and it's the most important is that whenever I enter something here I want this to change and I want it to show me the weather of whatever input I put so here we need to do two things. We need to grab the input, the value of the input, and assign it to the URL 
so that when we fetch, we fetch based on that URL. So that's easy, we saw it before, it's an interpolation based on the value. The second part is to add an event listener so that whenever you click search, you get back this result. So what do we need to do? We need to create an event listener. So this is why we grabbed the form before. So you can add an event listener on the form. And this is why we gave in our HTML the button a type of submit so that we can simply add the event listener of submit. And whenever submit is clicked, here's what we want to do. So this is what we want to do. Whenever someone clicks on submit, we want to fetch the API. Now, another thing you need to add for the page not to refresh every time you actually execute this is called prevent default. So the default of refreshing in order to not refresh, basically, that's it. It's just given to you by the JavaScript documentation and it's very useful. So what happens if we do Paris and then we search? We get London, but this is not what we want. Why? Because we didn't change the URL dynamically. So it's very simple. We are going to interpolate here the inputs value. So we call it input. But if you just put input, you get back the HTML part of it. So what do we want is whatever is inside of it. So you call value on it. And now if you try searching for Paris, you will get back Paris. If you search for London, you will get back London. So that's it guys. And you can see, as I promised, it's really less than 30 lines of code. It's amazing. And we can even refactor this by convention by simply doing the following. So we are just going to remove this. Let's remove this and assign this to a function. Make it a function actually and assign it to a variable. We want this in here. And basically, we just wanna call it every time the button inside of our form is clicked. And you can see this looks much nicer. The convention is also to add each part of your code in different files, but this doesn't matter for now. You'll see that it works just the same and it looks much nicer. Anyone else who would look at your code would be very happy. You can add comments as well. Anyways, this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your JavaScript journey.